and I am a big 49er fan. I know Kevin the Commonwealth Picker is a big Ram fan. I don't know what, what, what went wrong there. Uh, something really went wrong with Kevin. He went off the rails when he became a Ram fan. I think he was he was little. Uh, still a Ram fan. His Rams won the Super Bowl, and they beat my team last year. I'm not, you're not happy about it. Hey everybody, my Golden State Picker. Great video today. A little long probably, but hey, it's well worth it. A lot of things we found, a lot of cool things that we sold, and a very special guest, not Joshua. Not Joshua. You're going to have to stick around to see who that guest will be. All right? We've got an article. We're going to skim through the article because it's kind of cool. It's kind of funny. We always like to pick something like that, and we're just going to go through everything. We got a lot. It's been a little bit more busy the last week, so I've been really, uh, you know, just just unindated. As a matter of fact, today's Sunday. I really you don't like to do stuff like this on Sunday, but hey, when you're in business for yourself, you got to do what you got to do. And to this morning, I got to get all this stuff done. I'm hoping to finish it all up by noon. Got a lot of packaging, all that kind of stuff, and I'm doing this video, and I'm excited about our special guest. All right, all right. Let's get right into the article. Let's get right into it. Hilarious. I read this one and I couldn't believe it. So maybe some of you have seen it. Here it comes. I'll put everything up on the screen so you kind of can see it. New York City store locks up spam in plastic case amid crime spike. Wow. What is that? I couldn't believe it when I saw it. I'm looking at it and you have to dig deeper. We're going to dig a little deeper into it, but... Basically, everywhere you go right now, if you go into some of these stores in these bigger cities, a lot of stuff's locked up behind plastic. You got to get a store clerk to open it up to get basics of, of life. Some higher end lotions, whatever, you know, razors, all that stuff's being locked up. Now, some of these grocery stores are locking up stuff like spam, tuna. It's just, it's bizarre. I'm going to put the picture of the cases when you see these cases uh, that they're locked in. It's on Twitter. It's been everywhere. So it's pretty darn interesting. But this is a major epidemic in some of these cities. And what is happening is it's trades, it, it's going into being resold. A lot of this stuff ends up at flea markets. Uh, we know about all the clothing and some of the shoes and all these other big heists from malls. Some of that stuff is ending up online. And it's making it difficult for honest resellers, right? Because, hey, uh, these people are looking on eBay and the such, and they're cracking down. And that's going to affect us somewhere down the road if this keeps going on. It's just nuts, all right? So here's the article real quick. So the one-two punch of inflation and rising crime has caused at least one New York City store to lock up its inventory of spam in a plastic case. All right, here they come. I'm going to show you the picture. There you go. That is the spam locked up in the plastic case. It's like a, uh, a you almost could grade it, you know, send it into a PSA. And this is a uh, 9.5 grading of a spam can. <laughs> it's just crazy. All right. Shoppers, store employees, and social media users expressed disbelief after discovering the $3.99 canned meat product out of reach behind lock and key at a Dwayne Reed's Reed inside New York City's Port Authority bus depot, the New York Post reported. Okay, it's not in every store, but we know because, hey, we've been in there that the razors and those things are being locked up. But here's another tip, not another tip, but here's another fact. Many, many years ago, you know, you know, go back 100 years, when you went to, this, to go shop for stuff, we didn't have these massive grocery stores. We had local places, and usually the stuff was behind the counter. If you've ever been to an old city or a ghost town or something, you'll see that the general store might have had a, a wall, and behind it was the goods, and he would actually hand it to you. We didn't have 50,000, 60,000 items like we do today, and you can't patrol these places all the time. They're not hiring loss prevention. Back in the day when I was a teenager, uh, stores had loss prevention people, uh, uh, off-duty officers, so forth, trying to keep shoplifting under control. Now it's just rampant. People are just taking it and running, and they don't even chase them. I was in the mall with my wife last week, and there was a Target that's inside of a mall, and I was very surprised to see when I walked in from the mall side that all the beer was right by the mall side uh, exit, and I'm thinking to myself, 
that doesn't look right. Because, I mean, you could just walk up, take a case of beer, and, and you'd be gone. There would be no, nobody would even know. So that was kind of an odd thing. They're having to set stores up so that, hey, they're more difficult to take stuff. Absolutely crazy, right? So the article goes on. I've never seen that before. One cashier laughed with while removing the spam from its plastic anti-theft uh, covering. You know, how many times have you forgotten clothing, right? And you've left the store and that little ink thing is still on it because they forgot to take it off, right? Can you imagine you get home and you find your spam locked behind the plastic? because they forgot to take it out or you forgot to see it <laughs> just bizarre bizarre oh so yeah so it just goes on and, and it gets down to here it says uh uh it basically talks about here the the the, the, the even the, the workers are laughing they're going this is just ridiculous it says i don't think they stop anything a store clerk named iggy said about the anti-theft cases it's security theater if you really needed it you would just stomp on it <laughs> so there you go the world is coming to an end. It's When spam is locked up, that's the end of it, right? And I know that in Hawaii, spam is huge, and it's being locked up in Hawaii. It's being, So it's even there. It's even there. Absolutely crazy stuff, folks. We live in a different time today, and uh, I always bring you something. I try. All right, let's get right into some things that we found, all right? Uh, again, I had to make two videos. So this is the second half of another video because I had found so much stuff and then I, I've sold quite a bit. It's been been better. It's been a lot more consistent. So let's get right into it. Let's, uh, let's talk about the things we found. Hey, let's start off with the bin of books. Everybody knows if you've watched my videos, I get the bin of books. And I don't just find books. Look at this thing I found. This is a smart sprinkler controller. Uh, it is wireless, so it works from your phone. Uh, I have one that it's, I just put in my backyard. Not like this one, but, you know, similar. Eight zones. Uh, brand spanking new in the bin of books. It's about a $60, $65 bill. Might take me a little bit longer because the name of it is Imo, Imolaza. Uh, if it was Rainbird or somebody, it would probably sell pretty quick. So, But again... It's like free money. So let's call this a $50 bill. Even if it was 50, there's like a $50 bill. It will sell eventually. I just need to be patient on it. So, uh, unique, unique. All right, up next, here we go. Braun hand blender and a chopper. Uh, brand new at Saver, $6, $6. Uh, and it will sell for $59 free shipping. That's again, when I talk, I usually set all my shipping. Uh, I put a price tag on the shipping. So if, uh, if this was uh, $12, I would put shipping $12. But this listing kind of dictates a free shipping uh, uh, setup. And I've looked at the comps and most of the ones that have sold, sold for $58 to $59 free shipping. So that's what I did here. I set it for free shipping. All right. Uh, let's go. Oh, hey, at a garage. Where did I get these? Uh, garage sale. Yeah. <laughs> wow, dense. I paid, I think, $5 each is what I paid for these. These are golf clubs here. And they are tailor made RBZ. So that is a, the RBZ is called Rocket Balls. This is a five wood, five wood with head cover. Remember, we talked about head cover. Always, always good. It always adds a little bit of extra value to the item. And here is a tailor-made uh, burner, super fast 2.0. There you go, nice little three wood. These are both left-handed, so left-handed can take some time to sell, but also there's not nearly as many comps, so you can maybe get a little few extra bucks. These are anywhere. These are about average fifty to seventy-five dollars a club, uh, but they will sell. Just takes a little bit of time. Now, again, we talk about the knowledge needed for stuff, right? Now, um, golf clubs, you need to know what is good and what isn't. And you can pretty much tell if it looks really old, it's probably nothing uh, worth value much. Some people will try and sell some of that stuff. I don't, I stick with the newer type golf clubs and products. And uh, that's where I like to sit. And after a while, you'll figure out how to find them and what you're looking for in the flex and a bunch of different things. Uh, again, knowledge is learning over time, okay? That's kind of what it is. You just gotta kind of learn it and you will get better at it as you keep doing it. So don't discount stuff like golf clubs, books, all that kind of stuff. Don't give up on that stuff, right? All right, I gotta check off a few things here where we headed to. Let's go, okay, let's go to this one right here. 
Ah, let me put this up here. A whole set of these at an estate sale. Look at that. What are they? They are dice cups. I love dice cups. I, they're hard to find sometimes, but what I was with my son and we went to this estate sale. We got a couple of things. I'm going to show you one very large thing. I got one really cool thing. And these were on the ground in this one room. I almost dove for them. I just love, I don't know, I just love these dice cups. Now, this one's not a leather one, and it's got a 1967 uh, BIN golf tournament on it. So, you know, it's 67, and they are uh, lucky cups. This one is the cool one. Oh, I love this look up. It's a smaller cup. If you look at it next to it, it's a smaller dice cup, okay? The leather, look at that. Look at that patina, that wear. Look at the wear. Just a beautiful little dice cup. Now, what came with it was a bunch of vintage dice, too. Okay, vintage dice. You, there's all, you can sell everything. Anyhow, there are five of these, okay? I had I had to pay. I paid $20 for all of them. $20. I didn't care. I lot up the two golf club ones, and then these two, which don't have logos, I put the dice with them, okay? So I put five dice each because of liar's dice for bars and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so uh, that's where these will probably go, liar's dice. And um, uh, basically, uh, they're probably, these are going to get me maybe 40 of the pair. And this one I'm not positive on yet, uh, but this one could be 40 by itself, 50 by itself. And then the other two, a little bit less, maybe 29, you know, that kind of thing. But you add it up and it's over probably $100 for all of them, at least over 100 bucks. So can't complain at all about that. Can't complain. All right, hey. Up next, we're cruising right along. Take a look at this. Another boogie board. Now, um, this is, again, knowledge. You know, it's BZ, okay? BZ is the first the first major boogie board player, I think, was Moray Boogie. And they still are the player, Moray Boogie. But I think BZ came and left Moray Boogie, the, the guy who, who founded BZ, and now he has, he's had his own for a while too. So these BZ boards, some of them can be worth some money. You can get $1,000 in some boogie boards if you find the right ones. Now this one's nothing great. This one came out of my, uh, if you saw my video past, I got this with the bundle of five items from a garage sale. So I basically paid six bucks for this guy. Six dollars. It has the leash. Um, it will get me at least, probably a solid $75. Not difficult to ship. People think, oh, how do you ship it? Uh, I buy a specific box. There's only one box that I buy, and this box is adjustable in many different ways. It comes with four pieces, but I can use it to split them, and I can use them for boogie boards. So that's what I do. I put them in there and shrink them down, and it's just a perfect fit. They won't get damaged. And you uh, pay about 10 bucks for the box. So splitting in half, $5 for the box. Shipping it to the West Coast in that way is about $25, $29, no more than that. So don't be afraid of shipping uh, stuff like the boogie board. Don't be afraid of that. All right. Uh, oh, here's one. Okay, take a look at this. I got to get back here. I got so much stuff today. This is cool. It's all behind me. Let me see if I can pick him up without destroying him. Well, something fell off. Oh, I'm getting too big. <laughs> what is he? What is he? Oh, I got to be really careful. His his little arm fell off. Hold on a second, guys. It's just going to glue back on here. Oh, my goodness. So imagine it on there because I'm going to glue it on there. But here we go. Very tricky little guy. It's a, look at him. All right. It's a nutcracker. Nutcracker. I paid two bucks. Two bucks. I'm gonna try and flip it on the bottom so you can kind of see the bottom. It's numbered, okay? And it's just, I got the back of it, the little plastic, the vinyl on the back. If you've ever had a tennis racket handle and when you put your hand on it, it's worn out, all the black comes off on it. I think you can kind of see, see some of the black? So I got I gotta be extremely careful, but it's $2. I couldn't pass it up. What makes it unique is the fire hose. I'm gonna try and pick them up again. This little piece is a music box. It's the hose. So how cool, right? How cool. And that's why I, well, $2 is why I picked it up. No, you know, so that was an obvious pickup. Uh, I'm going to, now, 
there's many comps on here, not comps, but there's many people trying to sell these for over 200, 250, 300. None have sold. What's I'm gonna do, because I paid $2, I'm gonna cut the price. I'm gonna make this thing sell. I'm gonna probably sell it for 100. I'm gonna just slash the price off of it, and I'm gonna mention everything about it. If you look at the front end of it, it's really clean. It doesn't have a problem, as long as you don't touch it. But hey, if you're gonna put it on a shelf, it's cool. And I liked that it was a music box. That was very, very interesting. All right, here I go, put it back down. All right, pick up the next item. This one was very, very cool. This one I got at a garage sale. And I looked at it and, and it just, when you, you know, when you're doing things right, sometimes you just gotta trust your eyes and your mind. It's that simple. And this was just too cool to pass up. You can see it, I'll pull them out. Gotta be very careful, they're ceramic, okay? Uh, many of you know what it is already, but I'm gonna show you. It's a chess set. Look at that. Now, I got a question. First thing that comes to your mind, horror picture. Horror movie. That's what I thought. Scream. Scream, the horror movie. When I saw these, I thought, well, they're kind of different. Uh, they're different. And I paid $10 for the entire uh, set. I have no idea what they're worth. But guess what? They're worth more than $10. That's all I know. And they're just very cool. Um, let me see if I can find a king or a queen to show you. Here's a black one. That's the queen. You can kind of see it. And the castles are very unique. This is a castle, okay? So it's interesting. That's the what I like about thrifting and everybody likes about just going out and finding things is you find stuff like this. It's very interesting. Who knows what I'm gonna get? They're not that difficult. Here's another thing. They're not that difficult to ship because all you do, wrap them in, in a newspaper, boom, just stick them in a box with more newspaper around it pre-box it. That's what I'm going to do with this. This will all be ready to go. So if it sells, boom, out. I don't have to spend the time. I'll just spend the time now wrapping it and getting it ready to ship out. All right. Put that one down. Careful. Gotta be careful. Gotta be careful. Okay. Let's go to, uh, I'm going to put, I'm going to save the best for last, best for last. I don't want you to see it just yet. All right. Garage sale. The garage sale was this stuff here, okay? All of this stuff in here. I'm gonna see if I can just semi-open it so you kinda can see what it is. Uh, basically, many of you are gonna know, okay? It's a Cricut, okay? That is a uh, cutting machine for cutting, for stamping, all kinds of different things. There are, I believe, some 25 of these uh, uh, little cutting uh, cartridges that come with it. 25 of them, plus the actual machine. So I gotta put this down, let me put this down. And it is a Cricut Expression, okay? And the Cricut Expression, again, the reason I bought this was mostly for the cartridges. The unit is nice, and there's another case of cartridges inside here in a case. If you see it, here's the Cricut. See, look at a nice little case. And inside that are a whole bunch more uh, cartridges. So I've got a ton of them. I paid $30, $30 for this. Uh, tested the Cricut, works fine, okay? The, the actual unit. I hope I'm saying it right, Cricut. If this thing is Cricut, I'm just, ay, ay, ay. Uh, 30 bucks. Now, how much do we get for it? I think we get about 200. Now, if this was the unit itself, just the unit, I wouldn't have bought it. it. They don't sell that well and they're awkward to ship. I personally probably wouldn't have bought it. But with all of the accessories, definitely a buy. Definitely a buy. And I think we're gonna get about 200 bucks for that. All right, and I'm putting it down, hold on. All right, now for the big one. I told you it was a big show today. Stick around for our special guest coming up in a second all right went to an estate sale this was an uh, late the estate sale was late um it was probably 10 30 and we roll in we go walk around and that's where i got the dice cups and lo and behold on the kitchen counter is this little guy oh boy yes oh boy 
And uh, there was no price on it, actually. And I said, hey, how much? And they said, $50. And I said, sold. What is it again? If you know me, you know how I love the espresso machine. And there you go. And this is a Pavoni. Okay, the Pavoni. And uh, it is a press here and it, all the stuff comes through the water and everything and the steam is on the steam is on the side these guys are not cheap brand new this guy is 1200 to 1500 depending where you can find it used i believe we are a solid in this range 500 to 700 dollars easy and if you've seen me sell them you know i if you've seen my videos you know i sell them basically right you saw the free one i got okay and I sold that for 350 and it's not even close to this one. Now this one was dirty too, it was real dirty, but it's stainless steel and I cleaned it up real nice, real nice. So, I mean, it was no, it was like, I want that. Does it work? She says, yes, it works. That's the only thing, I haven't tested it yet, but I know she told me it works, it's probably gonna work. Even if it didn't work, 400 bucks for parts, I'm pretty sure, no problem. I think we're five to seven solid in that range. We'll tell you when we sell it, when we sell it. Uh, so keep your eye out for those espresso machines. All right, we're gonna stop here. I'm gonna go get my special guest and we'll talk. And then we'll go show you some things that we sold uh, also. All right, guys, be right back. All right, hey everybody, look who's here, look who's here. It's my beautiful wife. This is my wife of 35 years, going on 36 in November. This is Betty. Hello. Say hi. Say hi again. Hello, everybody. Yeah, she's always been behind the scenes. She occasionally walks through the door, but we got a new what? We got the new sign, right? It says recording, right? So yes. we all, yeah, she's, it's funny. She's, she's great. She's great. But anyhow, I thought you'd want to at least see her. And I wanted to celebrate two things we're going to talk about. But basically, she finally retired. We talked about it in all these videos all this time. And you finally did it, right? I sure did. When's your, when was your last day? Officially last, oh well, Friday was my last day of work. Next Friday is my official last day of work. She's got a week vacation, so she's going on vacation before she retires. And then we're taking off eventually here to go see our grandkids, which is big, right? Our first trip. Our first trip. We, got, we already got four trips lined up, one for each month. And that's kind of what we're trying to do, stuff like that when we're when we're here. That's the goal of the channel or the goal of reselling is to try to get to where we can have our freedom, right? What's, what was your biggest thing at work that you just didn't like? Well, the number one question I got asked yeah. when everyone found out I was going to retire was, you know, what's the, what are you looking most forward to? And I can say honestly is my freedom. Freedom to travel, freedom to get up and decide what I'm going to do that day, not have to sign up a year in advance for a vacation, a two-week vacation. So that's... Um, the most uh, uh, I'm looking forward to that the most. Yeah, she. So that was the crazy thing. She had a lot of seniority, but even with most, some of your seniority, right? It was tough. You couldn't. She'd have to sign up in January for vacations, and we'd always end up in August, September. We'd have to wait. She. So now we just pick up and we go. That's the great thing about owning a business, being a business owner. You have some freedom, but being retired, like my wife, right? We have a little bit more freedom. We're gonna go see our grandkids. She's gonna stay for about three weeks. Have a have a good time seeing our grandkids and all that stuff. We're just looking forward to just doing doing stuff, and maybe she'll help out. You think I can get her to pack amplifiers for me? <laughs> no, not gonna happen, right? Not gonna happen. But hey, you notice the bike's gone. She already rode the bike. The bike is right out here. She she likes to ride the bike. I like to ride the bike. Hopefully, I'll do that too with her. It's gonna be great. And we want to give a shout out to our friend and my my uh, son's uh, girlfriend who is in the Philippines. And we want to say a belated. We I was supposed to do this before, and I kept forgetting. Uh, a belated happy birthday to Pow, right? Right. Say, happy belated birthday, Pow. Ha happy birthday, Pow. We didn't forget you. We didn't forget you. But anyhow, so we're going to have fun. I just wanted to show her off a little bit here. This is my wife. Much I, I did marry very well. <laughs> right? <laughs> sure. I did. I did marry very well. <laughs> I, I'm going to try and find a picture of, uh, a early picture of us when we were in Hawaii. I'll think we, we got that picture somewhere. I'm going to show you guys that. You'll see how much different I look. She hasn't changed at all. She hasn't changed at all. All right, guys. Say bye. Bye-bye. All right. All right. Hey, everybody. How cool is that, huh? You got to see my wife. Yeah? Yeah? I know, I haven't shown, I showed Josh, I didn't show my wife, but the, that was a good reason why, right? I mean, hey, she put in her years, she's done, she hit the retirement age, she gets a pension, she gets all that, she's doing great. 
And uh, if this is going to be her first Monday off. And then we're going to go see some grandkids, and it's going to be really, really fun. Uh, that's what's so great about this whole thing about reselling. And if you can plan and get yourself set up, you can take this into your retirement years and make your retirement years even better. And you won't be affected by all this inflation, all this other stuff as much. Um, and that's the key. Get yourself financially secure. Get yourself in a good position. And then go enjoy the rest of your life, right? Because I'm in that last third. You know, it's 0 to 30, 30 to 60, and then 60 to 90. I'm not feeling old. I talk about it as an, in a joking way. You know, old guys rule. All that kind of stuff. But hey, you're as young as you want to feel, right? And I feel good, so I can't wait. The next five years are going to be exciting. And then from there, we'll see where we go. We'll see where we go. All right. Hope, hey, also, I hope she helps me out a little bit. Maybe she'll start thrifting. Who knows? Maybe we'll do videos with her. Who? I don't know. We'll just let the channel go where it goes. All right. Let's get some things that we sold. Some things that we sold. We'll go through them really quick, try and get going through them fast. Uh, right off the bat, let's start off with a book. This was a cool book. Again, another one you can find most places if you're lucky, but it's not necessarily. You just have to, you know, you find them at garage sales, all that. That's called Funk Funkelpanzer, and it's a history of German army remote and radio controlled armor units. Bizarre. No, it's just titles are just so cool. And look at this, huh? Can you imagine they had remote controlled units back then, I guess? And it's just a book of all kinds of you know history stuff and yeah the you can see it's got a little antenna on this one right here this guy sold for fifty dollars plus nine dollars shipping out of a bin of books half a bin right there with one book all right right behind me the old golf club the nike this is the nike slingshot series i'll give you a couple pointers on this that you got to watch out for this is the slingshot you can kind of see this bowed back here very uh, the cavity base it's empty back there but with these there were several versions so you got to kind of they don't really put the slingshot name on it you just have to know it and the key is on the hosel is some numbers sometimes and this is uh the o i always it's either the oss or the 055 you just can't read it but you've got to make sure you've got the right one so check the hosel on this particular brand uh, for any markings here uh, and look at the different shapes. There were a couple that were different shapes. This is a four iron and this sold for 35 plus $14 uh, shipping, all right? Up next, one of my East Side Story albums. Uh, I got about eight or nine of these. I think there are 12 in the series. I think that's how many there are. I wanted to keep this series, but they were in not too good a condition. If they were in really good condition, I probably would have kept them. So we put it up for sale. The cover is very good on this one. Now, all the records were in pretty rough condition here. Uh, I'm going to try and show you what I consider rough condition. If you can see, can you see? Okay, you can kind of see it, especially up in here. Okay, rough condition. Now. One of the great new things on eBay that will help you sell your product and you need to use it, this is the one item you need to start to use more of, is the video feature where you can insert a video into your ad. That's what I did with this one. I took a video of this playing throughout the record so that they could see that this record is, you know, pop, crackle, hiss, all that kind of stuff. It's there. And I want to be transparent. That is a great way to use the video is on albums, especially ones like this that have some value. And exactly for the espresso machine that you saw, I will make a video using that one. The Nutcracker music box, I will use a video on that one. So you can see how video can really enhance your ad if others aren't doing it, especially, especially on albums and those espresso machines. You show them working, you're, you're good. Now, we got $50 for this album plus $6 shipping. If this was mint in really, really good condition, say very good plus or excellent, talking maybe 100 okay? This is a tough, these are tough to find. Now, I had to sell it because it wasn't in the condition I wanted it into, so there we go, all right? Next up is a part. This is a part 
to the Omega um, Juicer. I bought an Omega Juicer at a uh, garage sale last weekend, and I, I paid, I think, five bucks for the thing. Wasn't all there, but there were almost all the parts. And this is a piece uh, that has a screen on it for the juicer. And this guy right here sold for $33 plus free shipping. Already, uh, let's knock it down to 20 net, right? Already made four times my money. And I still got about four or five more parts. So when in doubt, part that thing out. That's a good way to think about it. All right. I departed when I did my garage sale. I, I found some things uh, that I didn't want anymore, and I am a big 49er fan. I know Kevin the Commonwealth Picker is a big Ram fan. I don't know what, what went wrong there. Uh, something really went wrong with Kevin. He went off the rails when he became a Ram fan. I think he was, he was little. Uh, still a Ram fan. His Rams won the Super Bowl, and they beat my team last year. I'm not, you're not happy about it. But this year's different. All right. But Kevin, this is for Kevin, a shout out. I hope you're watching, Kevin. If not, somebody tell him. <laughs> All of my old 49er Super Bowl newspapers, a lot of them. Now, I know Kevin's got two Super Bowls, but do you have five for the 49ers, Kevin? You know, look at that. 40 Super Niners, 55 to 10. Uh, 49ers, fast, fantastic finish. Third title of the 80s, the team of the 80s. Anyhow... There was a bunch of them, and I had to just get rid of them. Now, you know, I, I would have kept them if I could have done something with them, but I'd rather have somebody else. If, if not, I'll give them to someone else. And they didn't sell for a ton of money, $29 plus $25 shipping. You can't ship this media mail because there's advertisement in it. That's the way I have been told. It's Even if it's old advertisement, you can't. So this will, and it's not too far away. It's going in California, so it's not going to kill me. So that's a good a good deal there. All right, let Kevin know. Let him know about those 49ers. All right, uh, matter of fact, I'm leaving for North Carolina. Hope to get to see Kevin. I'm going to text him and let him know that I'll be on my way, and maybe I'll stop by and we'll make a video. All right, up next. Oh, uh, it got caught. <laughs> Sony, little Sony amplifier. Nothing fantastic. A $50 bill plus $24 shipping. Now, you've heard me say, hey, my amplifier should be 50 shipping. That's the bigger ones. This is a little bit smaller one, so it can go for about $25 shipping uh, once you get it in a nice little package. It's not the bigger amplifiers that require a lot more work, a lot more work. So you got to be able to learn those variations in shipping. That's where you're going to make money and lose money is in shipping. You will get crushed if you screw that stuff up all the time. All right. So keep your eye out for these amplifiers. And all, I think I only paid like five or six bucks for that. All right, this one, I, this one's a shout out to my friend Alex and Eddie. And Alex was there when I got this guy. Okay, this is the Mighty Ducks. It's a rarer one, Anaheim Ducks, I guess. Uh, before they were whatever the Mighty Ducks. Uh, I'm not a, a, a hockey fan. I paid, I think, ten dollars for this jersey. And Alex, the shout out is because you know I got it and you saw it. And it sold for $120 plus $15 shipping. So a really cool older style jersey. And one of the young kids got beat by the old guy. The old guy got that before he did. So just always got to have a little jab. Hey, that's the thing with, with friends out there when you're doing networking and stuff. There's nothing wrong with giving a needle or a little dit dit, you know. It, it, it's fun. It gives you that competitive juices too. I'm gonna get him. Then I'm gonna get one for him. You know that that's the, the whole thing about reselling is don't just give yourself your own little circle. Spread out a little bit. You'll be amazed at what will happen when you do that. When you do that. All right, we got uh, one here, which I I didn't put this on it, so I'm gonna guess at the price. I forgot, but I want to show you it. It's a FLCL uh, Fully Cooley. That's what that stands for. It's Japanese. You can see it's in Japanese, okay? But it's some kind of drawing anime uh, cartoon book, okay? No clue, but it was in the bin of books. And I think it sold for 50. Don't hold me to it. I'll put it up here. If it's wrong, I'll, you'll obviously see that. But it was $50 plus from shipping. Again, just those two books is one bin of books. The whole cost of one bin of books. Really great. And you throw this guy in. And there's another one out of the bin. How many times do you see me? Bibles, Bibles, Bibles. Some people always get upset that you sell Bibles, but 
hey, what am I going to do? Throw this away? This is a beautiful Bible. This is the New English Bible with the apothecary. Uh, poth- I can't say it. Apothecary. Oh, my gosh. I butchered it. Guys, sorry about that. Straighten me out. Straighten me out. <laughs> it's a Cambridge, all right? And it's leather. Now, a lot of times they're going to put the leather down here. Bonded, genuine, cowhide, whatever. Now, this is a little bit different on this one. This one here has it. Oh, I got to find it. Where is it? Um, down here. You'll see where it's written down there. You can see it. I'll pull it apart a little bit right down there. And this one says water buffalo calf skin. So this is water buffalo calf skin. It's just great in the title. It looks good in the title. It doesn't mean it's going to sell for a ton more, but it just says it's leather. It did sell for $48 plus seven dollars shipping so right there those three items 150 dollars out of my bin of books okay you can see how we roll here Whew. done that's it i can't do anymore all right hey glad you guys stuck around i hope so uh you got to see my wife that's cool i always like to share my family a little bit you know um sometimes they're a little private they don't want to be on the golden state pick or sometimes they're like oh i don't know i'm too shy i'm too this i'm too that there you go anyhow Hit the like button, hit the subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.